Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 18th Annual National History Teacher of the Year Ceremony. My name is Flavia Nunez, and I am a senior at the School for Advanced Studies in Miami, Florida. I'm also a member of the Student Advisory Council at the Gilder Lerman Institute. I am so honored to be here tonight, playing a small role in this prestigious event. While we were hoping to gather in person once again for tonight's program, the difficulties surrounding in-person events have prompted us to bring this event online for the second year in a row. The silver lining of which is that we are able to welcome people all across the country and beyond, including myself, speaking to you from sunny Southern Florida. The National History Teacher of the Year Award is one of the most prestigious awards in its field. And this year, the Institute received the largest number of nominations in the history of the award over 8,000 nominations from every state in the country, as well as some from abroad. There's no question that teachers are the lifeblood of the education system, but history teachers in particular have never been more important. History teachers are responsible for shaping the citizens of tomorrow and making clear the link between connecting the past to present and future. We are honored to recognize the best history educators in the country here tonight. While we are gathered here tonight to celebrate one national winner, we are also here to recognize all teachers and the transformative influence they have on students like myself. For the next half hour, we will hear from a range of superstar teachers in the Gilder Lerman community, past winners of the National History Teacher of the Year Award, state winners from 2021, and of course, this year's national winner. Later in the program, esteemed Harvard professor and Gilder Lerman trustee, Henry Louis Gates Jr. will present the National History Teacher of the Year Award, and we'll see a short video from our ceremony sponsor, History, on the winner. To kick things off, here's a short video that tells you a bit more about the history of the prestigious award and the profound impact it can have on the lives and careers of those who win it. Enjoy the program. Founded in 2004, the History Teacher of the Year Award has highlighted the importance of history education by honoring exceptional American history teachers. The award honors one K-12 teacher from each state, as well as the District of Columbia, Department of Defense Schools, and U.S. Territories. From this pool of state winners, a National History Teacher of the Year is selected each fall and honored at an elegant ceremony in New York City. Past events have featured notable speakers, including former First Lady Laura Bush, We are also recognizing all teachers for the work they do. Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda, essential workers. Former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, Historian and former President of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation Earl Lewis, and others. These educators are chosen for their impact on student learning and excitement and their innovative methods of bringing history to life for their students through the use of historic documents and artifacts, field trips, demonstrations, and hands-on projects. By winning this prestigious award, these educators are inducted into an elite group of the nation's best history teachers. Hear from some of our past winners about the impact this award had on them, both personally and professionally. This award focuses on educators who give 110% in the classroom uh, in terms of not only improving their content knowledge over time, but most importantly to getting students to really appreciate American history. Gilbert Lehrman really made a difference for me professionally by offering me a platform to advocate for high quality history education, for diverse history education, and really history education that's rooted in the documents that, that make up our great national story. This award has helped show me that I'm essential. I'm essential in preserving and furthering this democracy. I'm also essential in helping our students remember our country's humanity, our country's greatness, as well as our country's shortcomings. To know that there were, there were organizations like Gilder Lehrman who wanted to reach out and, and, and speak to teachers and say, we see you and we know the hard work that you're putting in and we appreciate you. It is an honor that has opened doors that I never thought possible. Instead of attending professional development with preeminent historians, 
I'm now leading that professional development. I'm now teaching teachers how to use that literacy through history program, how to take that to their students and transform how they teach in the classroom to make their students into student historians. Just knowing that I was able to make a difference and that Gilder Lerman was encouraging me and teachers like me to aim higher, reach higher, challenge ourselves, change people's lives in and out of the classroom. Engaging and inspiring students in American history education has never been more critical. And the Gilder Lerman Institute is proud to recognize and reward outstanding history teachers for their service. The national winner receives a $10,000 prize and State History Teachers of the Year receive a prize package including a $1,000 award and a collection of classroom resources and are also honored at a ceremony in their home state. Congratulations to the 2021 state and national winners. The Institute is thrilled to honor your accomplishments and celebrate you here this evening. To all the teachers in the audience tonight, Thank you for joining us and for doing the important work that you do. Hello everyone, my name is Drew Rungta and I'm a senior at John P. Stevens High School in Edison, New Jersey. I've been a member of the Student Advisory Council at the Gilder Lehrman Institute since 2020. I hope everyone enjoyed that short video about the history of the award and hearing from a few of our past winners. The road to winning the national award starts afresh each year when parents, community members, school administrators, and others nominate an excellent teacher for the award. The Institute casts the net far and wide to make sure that outstanding history teachers in the country, from major urban centers to the smallest rural communities are included among the nominations for this award. Nominated teachers then submit materials to flesh out their candidacy, including lesson materials they use in their classroom, and a jury of past winners and Gilder Lehrman master teachers select one winner in each state, U.S. territory, the District of Columbia, and Department of Defense schools, and each of them is honored at a ceremony in their home state. It is from this pool of state winners that the national winner is chosen, after careful deliberation by a distinguished national jury. The talents, innovative teaching methods, and classroom work of these teachers is what distinguishes them and marks them out as the worthy winners of this award. We thought you would like to hear from some of this year's state winners who embody the very spirit of this award. Teaching history is more important than ever, because in any good history class, we're modeling to kids the skills that we would want them to have as lifelong learners. Critical thinking, speaking, writing, and listening skills. These are all the types of things that we want a kid to have so that they can make sense not of just the past, but of their own times as well. Teaching history is about relationships. Um, teaching history is about making sure that our students understand the personal relationships between the past and their relationships in their communities today, for example. It's about making sure that when we talk with our students about history, that we talk about um, the past of their communities and how that's moving forward into the future, or about the relationships between the past and the present. Your students need to see themselves in history. If you want to have your students connect with that history, they need to see themselves there in order to feel that connection. I try to make sure that I highlight those voices and peoples and histories that sometimes are omitted from um, certain historical accounts so that my students can see themselves reflected in the curriculum and also learn about others, which is another important part of it. Some advice that I have for teachers or maybe future teachers out there is to be yourself. I know that first year uh, as a teacher, I tried to live up to what I thought a good teacher would be, but I wasn't being myself. I wasn't having fun with the content. I wasn't showing students that history can be fun. So that second year, I was resolved to, to do that, to have fun. And we started, started out with, you know, letting down my guard and acting things out and 
singing songs and just being silly. Uh, and through that, I, students started to be more engaged in what we were doing in the class and, and really having fun with some topics that can be deep and heavy topics at times. The other piece of advice that I would give is to always have your students question why. I always tell them to question any document that I'm giving them to look at, any primary source, any secondary source. I want them to go out into our world as critical thinkers, questioning the information that they see. Make sure your students have the skills of the historian. They can analyze documents. They can ask questions about the past that they've gained in the present to get a better understanding of the past. Can they figure out the voices of the past? Whose voices do they trust? Whose voices maybe should have an asterisk or a question mark about it? But whose voices are absent? And what does that tell us about the past? Don't just teach from a textbook. Uh, teach scholarship that impresses you. Teach some of your favorite historians. Don't be afraid to have your students tackle complicated material uh, where there is, you know, imaginative scholarship and, and argument. Uh, and, and then ideally have the students use some of those same primary documents that you know that, the, that those scholars used um, to help them get an idea of how great historians uh, build their arguments and shape their narratives. Teaching has also allowed me to remain a student. I get 150 new teachers through my students every year in addition to new colleagues. There's really no separation for me between myself as a classroom teacher and myself as an ongoing student. Because at the end of the day, we want our students to be not only college and career ready, but we want them to be informed citizens. We want them to be able to take their experiences that they're having in schools and then in their communities and to go out and truly make a difference. So at the end of the day, by understanding their history, understanding who they are, they can go out and work together for a more just society. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Basker and it is my privilege as president of the Gilder Lehrman Institute to tell you why the National History Teacher of the Year Award means so much to us. At the Institute, we believe teachers are the lifeblood of the system. I'm sure everyone here in this audience remembers a special teacher who sparked curiosity, instilled confidence, inspired a passion, changed our understanding of the world. For me, growing up in a small town in rural Oregon, there were several such teachers, beginning with Bill Baker at Fruitdale Elementary School. An influential above them all was my mother, a career school teacher who inspired each of her own five children while shaping the lives of hundreds of others in our community. At the Institute, we also believe that of all the subjects in school, American history is the most important not only because each of us needs that knowledge to be a competent and caring citizen, but because the future of our country depends on it. So we were thrilled when 17 years ago, First Lady Laura Bush, herself a teacher, joined with us to begin honoring the country's outstanding history teacher of the year, chosen from the pool of more than 50 state and territorial winners. For the first five years, Laura Bush traveled to New York to present the award herself. Over the years, the program has grown. As you have heard, this year, there were more than 8,500 teachers nominated. More than 8,500 dedicated, hardworking teachers who received an email saying, Congratulations, you have been nominated by someone in your community for History Teacher of the Year. 
Imagine what it means to receive that message, especially in a grueling year like this past one. We like to think those messages pour energy and encouragement into the hearts of thousands of teachers and through them into the lives of hundreds of thousands of students and into the civic life of the communities where they live. And everyone in our audience today, whether teacher or student or parent, indeed any community member, can join in this process very easily just by sending us the name and school of a teacher they admire and want to be included. We'll do the rest. From those 8,500 nominations, 50 plus state and territorial winners were selected by individual state committees, each to receive a $1,000 award, their school to receive an archive of materials in their name, and the winning teacher to be honored at a public ceremony in their state. From those state and territorial winners, a special committee selects the national winner. This year, it is the Connecticut History Teacher of the Year, Natalia Braginsky, who has emerged as a national winner, about whose extraordinary career and contributions you will hear more in a moment in a special tribute video prepared by our partners at History, formerly the History Channel. The award itself will then be presented by our dear friend and supporter, and trustee of the Gilder Lehrman Institute, Professor Henry Louis Gates, Jr., a man whose work has shaped our nation's sense of itself as much as any other historian in our time. Before moving on to this year's presentation, I want to say on behalf of the Institute that this award has always been intended in recognizing a single phenomenal teacher to convey a sense of appreciation and recognition to all the dedicated teaching professionals who give so much of themselves every day all year long to the education and development of our children. How can we ever thank them enough? As Gilder Lehrman begins its 28th year with 30,000 affiliate schools and programs across all 50 states and more than 3 million unique visitors engaged with us online, we continue to strive to provide the kinds of resources and support that will enrich and energize the teaching and learning of American history and deepen our collective sense of its importance to the health of our nation. That is our mission and our promise to all of you. And now to the 2021 National History Teacher of the Year. My name is Natalia Braginsky and I'm a high school social studies teacher. The main class I teach is African-American and Latinx history. Without knowing and understanding our history and its profound impact, we are lost. History is so powerful. We must teach the truth, the full story. Public schools are one of our country's most important institutions and we need to invest in them. I'm a product of public schools and so I wanted to teach in public schools. I think I would sum up Natalia's teaching style, teaching presence by saying radical visionary. Unconventional, I mean, she teaches the way her students are. She goes outside of the box. She teaches us things that other people probably won't feel comfortable with, um, but it's the thing that we need to know the most. The word that I always think about when I teach this is reverence. I am angered and upset by a lot of this history and also like in awe and inspired by these histories of resistance and of struggles for justice. She piloted this African-American Latinx history course and built it with her students. It really is young people, students um, and youth leaders who fought this fight. They worked with legislators to fight for and win this mandate that every high school in Connecticut must offer African-American and Latinx history. It makes me feel heard and seen. She asks us what we want to learn and plans the entire year around that. So one of my students' favorite projects is um, the map and walking tours that we created. This is a map of New Haven's Black, Indigenous, and Latinx history that each student researched a different historic site in 1986, over 2,000 people gathered on the Jackson newspaper plant and protested. This is the courthouse where the trial of Corey Menefee took place for breaking a stained glass window, depicting the really degrading racist image. Creating relationships with her students to do meaningful work that shows that they matter, that their history matters. 
Emma Jones. Her son was a victim of police brutality, um, and she fought for 22 years along with the people against police brutality. Students themselves producing and interpreting historical knowledge, and that's very, very innovative and very, very unusual. I see you all as historians, and I see you all as educators. So, like, you teaching each other, you teaching me, and teaching New Haven about the history of this city. Definitely more confident in myself. I was not really confident before I met her. She always takes our opinion, like, on everything. And you know how people have their biases about certain kids? Like, she doesn't leave anyone behind. When she first seen me, she believed in me more than I believed in myself. You're actually a good person. You're actually, you actually have potential. You actually could do something, and she showed me how to do that. So it's just crazy to look at an empty lot right now where New Haven could potentially have one of the first HBCUs ever. It feels great. Historian next to my name, I might put that on my resume, not gonna lie. Teaching is a gift. One of the greatest joys that makes me feel so hopeful for the future is when I see students who graduate and go on to become history teachers. That is everything to me. A student came up to me and was like, I'm so proud of you. I was like, what? I'm so proud of you. Like, I, I really do think teaching is a collective project and this is a collective honor. And it includes students and it includes my fellow teachers and all the young people who fought for this legislation and won. I think, you know, it, this honor belongs to all of us. Good evening, my name is Naomi Nesmith, and I'm a sophomore at Brown University, majoring in art and architecture. I have been a member of the Student Advisory Council at the Gilder Lerman Institute since 2017. I hope everyone enjoyed that short video from our partners at History. I am so honored to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Professor Henry Louis Gates Jr., who will be presenting the National History Teacher of the Year Award. Professor Gates is the Alphonse Fletcher University Professor at Harvard and Director of the Hutchins Center for African American Research at the University. An award-winning filmmaker, literary scholar, journalist, cultural critic, and institution builder, Professor Gates has produced and hosted more than 20 documentary films and authored or co-authored 24 books, including his most recent work, The Black Church, which accompanied a four-part PBS special of the same name. In addition to being a major force in the intellectual and cultural life of our country, Professor Gates is a longtime friend of our beloved co-founder, the late Richard Gilder, and of the Gilder Lerman Institute itself. Everyone at the Institute is proud to have Professor Gates as one of our most distinguished trustees, and we are deeply grateful to him for agreeing to present this award to the 2021 National History Teacher of the Year. His prolific contributions to history scholarship and his commitment to furthering the public's knowledge and understanding of American history makes him uniquely qualified to present this prestigious award to the 2021 National History Teacher of the Year. Without further ado, please take it away, Professor Gates. Since 2004, the National History Teacher of the Year Award has sought out the most creative and dedicated history teachers in our country to celebrate their work and to present them to the world as inspiration. These are the teachers who take the seeds of primary sources and turn those seeds into classroom forests of living history. They help their students better understand current events through the progression of the times before their students become citizens of a future global society, maintaining their awareness of its foundations, ideal and flawed as they may be. Tonight, together, we honor the 2021 National History Teacher of the Year, Natalia Braginsky. Natalia teaches at Metropolitan Business Academy in New Haven, Connecticut. Her classes include African American and Latinx history, journalism, and contemporary law. She has developed curriculum for these and several other courses with a commitment to education for liberation. Natalia localizes history, taking her students to their neighborhood basketball court to bring them face-to-face -face with, who else? 
Frederick Douglass, who in 1864 spoke on the same site to nearly 2,000 black soldiers setting off to fight for the abolition of slavery. Her students researched for their map of New Haven's black, indigenous, and Latinx history uncovered the unrealized dream to build what would have been one of the first historically black colleges in the country in New Haven in 1831. Were it not blocked by city and Yale leadership then, that college would have been on the same street as the student school. Imagine that. Last year, she extended her popular virtual student walking tours, not only to look back at New Haven's history, but to look forward toward New Haven's future. Her students read speculative fiction by black, indigenous, and Latinx authors, and wrote their own visionary short stories, which historicize today's New Haven and imagine a future New Haven. In addition to teaching, Natalia formed a restorative justice working group at Metropolitan that led to the creation of a youth justice panel, an alternative to punitive discipline policies. Metropolitan's youth justice panel treats missteps and conflicts as opportunities to repair harm, restore relationships, and address root causes. The youth justice panel is one piece of a larger puzzle that works to dismantle the school to prison pipeline. Since 2012, Natalia has also been facilitating workshops for educators on culturally relevant pedagogy, anti-racist and liberatory education, curriculum development, and restorative justice practices. She has co-organized national conferences, including the Allied Media Conference's Education for Freedom track, Philadelphia Teacher Action Group's Education for Liberation Curriculum Fair, and New Haven's Culturally Relevant Pedagogy Conference. Natalia believes that educators must take an actively anti-racist stance and make a lifelong commitment toward this goal. Natalia's workshops in culturally relevant pedagogy, curriculum development, and restorative justice practices are designed to support educators who are working toward anti-oppression and liberatory education. For her work in the classroom and more broadly, in the broad field of education, we are proud to name Natalia Braginsky the 2021 National History Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Natalia, congratulations. If you want to make sense of the present, history teaches us you must look to the past. So when the overwhelming news of this award reached me, I turned to the most powerful question at our disposal. How did I get here? For the teachers and movement historians among you, the answer will come as no surprise. It was students who brought me here, who bring us together tonight, and who brought into existence a universe in which somehow Henry Louis Gates Jr. knows my name. A few years ago in New Haven, Connecticut, where I teach, young people across the city and throughout the state rose up to demand that their histories, that Black and Latinx and Indigenous histories, be taught in their schools. After years of dreaming and months of organizing, culminating in a train ride to Hartford and hours of public testimony at the Capitol, in 2019, legislation was passed mandating that every Connecticut high school offer an African-American and Latinx history course. It is because of this fierce coalition led by Students for Educational Justice, Hearing Youth Voices, Connecticut Students for a Dream, Citywide Youth Coalition, and the Connecticut Black and Brown Student Union that this vital course now exists. And it is because of these young people that I sit before you today. Many of those same student activists who made this course possible soon became student historians at Metropolitan High School, enrolling in the very course they had fought for and won. These students have been my collaborators and co-teachers for this course, and it is their work unearthing New Haven's Black, Indigenous, and Latinx history that has brought this recognition to our school and humbled me with this incredible honor. And in their wisdom, these young people know that the passing of this legislation, while a major victory, is not the end of the work. It's just the beginning. A beginning that has given rise to a growing movement one which has offered me new vision for what is possible in our schools and our cities. 
bring together youth and educators to fight shoulder to shoulder in the struggle for a liberatory education, the Anti-Racist Teaching and Learning Collective has solidified a truth that I've long known, but which I'm finally witnessing come to fruition. It's not just that teachers' working conditions and students' learning conditions are inextricably linked. It's not just that our needs and our desires for our schools are deeply connected. It's that when we fight together for the schools we deserve, we win. And now is the time for us to keep up that fight. One of the lessons that has emerged from this pandemic is that there has always been the money needed to fully fund our public schools. In the richest country in the world, it's never been a question of whether there's enough money, just a question of whether there's the political will to prioritize public education. May this be a call to action to students and educators across the country to fight together and not to settle for any less than the schools we deserve. Healthy and safe schools with full-time nurses, librarians, and social workers. Schools rooted in restorative justice, not punitive discipline. Schools that assess student growth with relevant and meaningful projects, not biased and profit-driven standardized tests. Schools with well-resourced classrooms full of engaging books and schools that support us and defend our right to teach and learn the truth. I'm so grateful to the Gilder Lerman Institute, not just for honoring teachers every year, but for every day treating us like scholars. It is because of organizations like yours that educators can step fully into our role as historians and equip our students to do the same. By anchoring our work in the continued study of US history, we are able to teach the critical lessons of this country's past and present with confidence and conviction, even in the face of ahistorical and racist attacks. To my fellow educators and union members near and far who are fighting for racial justice in the classroom and in the streets, you inspire me. This honor belongs to all of us. May it fuel our ongoing struggle. To those teachers, I have the honor to work alongside every day Thank you for your vision, your encouragement, and your steady guidance. Without your crucial collaboration, I simply would not be here. The year we have just lived and taught through and the one ahead of us has not been and will not be easy. And as every educator knows, the practice of teaching extends well beyond the classroom door. We bring this work home with us and we draw upon the support of our families and communities to sustain us. There are so many people who sustain me in this work and to whom I offer my deepest gratitude. To the people of New Haven who have shared their stories, joined us in our classroom and supported this learning in more ways than I can count. To my dearest friends, so many of whom are yourselves radical educators, to grappling with the hardest parts of this work and also reveling in its joys together. To my parents and my grandparents, to my elders, who taught me at a young age about the great force of history and who showed me what it means to survive it. Спасибо, что научили меня нашей истории и привели мне гордость за наших предков. To my partner and my favorite historian, whose imprint is present in every lesson I teach, to a love that thrives on always learning from each other. And as we all press on in the face of so much struggle, it seems only right to end with the words of Arundhati Roy, who taught us that this pandemic can be a portal, a chance to imagine our world anew. She writes, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. In the voices of my students, my colleagues, and my beloved community, I can hear her too. Good evening, everyone, and I hope you all enjoyed tonight's program. My name is Daniel Morton, and I'm a senior at Laster High School in Marietta, Georgia. I joined the Gilder Lehrman Student Advisory Council this past year as a high school student who loves history. It is so exciting to meet other students who share my passion for the subject and to be able to connect with other teachers, professors, and history lovers across the country. I'd like to extend my congratulations to our winner, Ms. Briginski, and to all other state winners across the nation. But I would also like to thank every teacher in the audience here tonight for their important work. We are so grateful for the work they do every day. I'm so honored to introduce our final speaker for tonight's program, Valerie Rockefeller. 
Valerie is a longtime trustee of the Gilder Lehrman Institute and a civic leader who chairs the board of the Rockefellers Brothers Fund, a private foundation that advances social change that contributes to a more sustainable and peaceful world. She's also a former middle school teacher, and her experience in the classroom gives her unique perspective and insight and makes her an invaluable member of the Institute's board. She will provide some closing remarks as we wrap up tonight's event. Here is our beloved trustee, Valerie Rockefeller. Thank you, Daniel, and good evening, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's program as much as I have. I'm thrilled to be here tonight representing the Board of Trustees at the Gilder Lehrman Institute. As a former educator myself, the National History Teacher of the Year Award holds special resonance for me. I think it is so important to recognize the hard work and accomplishments of our educators, and the role of history teachers in particular has never been more critical. Teachers are truly the lifeblood of the educational system and are the reason Gilder Lehrman does what it does. In being asked to share a few words about why teachers matter, I was reminded about how profoundly impactful some of my own teachers were. I grew up in Charleston, West Virginia, and history was taught rather differently than I was prepared to teach it later on myself. But while the content and delivery may have been different, the significance of my teachers endured. Their impact on me was so profound, I never wavered in my belief that education is integral to social justice and democratic citizenship. Some teachers stand out. Myrna Geiger instilled in me an appreciation for structure and relationships. Lucretia James inspired me to focus on historical aspect of art, contextualizing beauty and creativity. My boss at the U.S. Department of Education was Terry Dozier, the 1985 National Teacher of the Year whose influence was so powerful that it compelled me to focus my graduate work on teacher leadership. My mentor teacher, Richard Miller, was the one who actually introduced me to the Gilder Lehrman Collection and encouraged me to weave more primary source documents in my seventh grade humanities curriculum. Mr. Miller's absolute passion for history and his longstanding participation in Gilder Lehrman teacher seminars are actually a great example of the kind of teacher we try to nurture at the Institute. Our mission at Gilder Lehrman is to help teachers continue to master their craft, to supply resources for their ongoing growth and development, to provide a source of community to teachers, students, and history lovers across the country, and to give unwavering support to teachers who are doing this noble work. We do this through professional development programs like book breaks and inside the vault teacher seminars, professional development workshops, and an online master's degree program through Pace University, one of the most affordable in the country. Through programs like these, the Institute has provided high caliber professional development to over 7,400 teachers since January of this year. More than 40% participated in multiple professional learning events with Gilder Lehrman so far this year. I encourage everyone in the audience tonight to join me in supporting the Institute so we can continue to expand our programs and resources for teachers. We're always looking for new ways to engage our friends and supporters. Please reach out if you'd like to support a specific program or school, or if you have ideas about a resource we might provide. Please help us honor teachers like Natalia, who touch the lives of countless students every year. On behalf of everyone at the Gilder Lerman Institute, thank you for spending your evening with us. Congratulations to Natalia and all of the state winners this year. And thank you to all the teachers joining us tonight for doing the work you do. Have a good evening.